thanks for it for the introduction and at the outset i would like to thank uh, aos and apgs for organizing this meeting the topic i chose is uh, an approach to exfoliation syndrome and exfoliation uh, glaucoma so what is exfoliation it is also popularly known as the pseudo exfoliation is an age related multifactorial progressive disorder characterized by excessive production of extracellular material that results in a white fibrillar deposit initially it was considered to be mainly an ocular disorder because it was seen easily on slit lamp examination because of that its systemic association was under diagnosed for many years other than i the deposits are seen in blood vessels kidneys gall bladder heart and meninges because of its extensive deposits in non ocular structure it causes progressive elastotic degeneration that leads to cerebrovascular and cardiovascular disease it also causes ischemic disease low grade inflammation and is associated with elevated serum homocysteine if you look at the epidemiology of exfoliation the reported prevalence of both exfoliation syndrome and exfoliation glaucoma varied generally in different ethnic groups in the early literature and it was found to be common in scandinavian countries but with the time with more information available from various population based studies currently we know that uh, exfoliation occurs worldwide increasing age was found to be an important risk factor other risk factors are incre- increasing distance from equator exposure to sun rural environment and uv ray exposure are the other risk factor it accounts for the 30% of open angle glaucoma coming to the uh, pathogenesis again it is multifactorial an imbalance between matrix metalloproteases and their endogenic inhibitors increased oxidative stress and altered cellular stress response have been proposed as the pathogenic mechanism a gene environment interaction has also been postulated even g are associated with exfoliation and plays a potential role uh, in its pathogenesis genome and association studies have revealed non lock cell one gene loci which are significantly associated with an increased risk of exfoliation such as cacna 1a and if you look at the exfoliation as a risk factor for glaucoma in the population based studies from uh, india and elsewhere it is found to be a very strong risk factor for glaucoma it increases the risk of glaucoma by almost 10 times and ocular hypertension association with exfoliation is found to be an important risk factor as i mentioned it it has a, a wide geographical distribution in the world in india in southern india is more common and the two in a rural population similarly when we looked at the incidence of uh, exfoliation we also found that the incidence also is more so in the rural population than with the urban population so our uh, chennai eye disease incident study has thrown light about exfoliation progression in our country in 6 years time 15% of the unilateral cases have become bilateral cases and in 6 years time almost 6% subjects exfoliation syndrome has converted into exfoliation glaucoma all had ocular hypertension at the baseline we also found in this group high incidence of cataract surgery that suggests exfoliation will be always associated with cataracts as well interestingly we found exfoliation will be uh, association with the high mortality in the people that was seen in both rural and urban even after adjusting for the age and gender we found 
the mortality rates were much higher, almost 13 patient per person with the exfoliation syndrome, in contrast to 8% in people without exfoliation syndrome, suggesting the systemic diseases out of the deposits of the exfoliation material may be contributing to the higher mortality in this group. Coming to the clinical picture, the early clinical signs, as I mentioned, it usually starts as unilateral cases, and 50% will become bilateral in 15 years. Even in unilateral cases, when the contralateral like conjunctival biopsy is uh, uh, done and examined microscopically, people found presence of the exfoliation. So it is more of asymmetry than the unilateral versus the bilateral. And it has a characteristic distribution. The exfoliation material will be seen around the pupillary margin and the lens surface. Lens surface has three distinct features. A central disc followed by a clear a ring of uh, non-exfoliated and a, again a peripheral deposits of the exfoliation. This happens mainly because of the pupillary rubbing that happens on the surface of the lens. With the dilatation and constriction, the material will get washed away and it gives this characteristic picture and examination in a post-dilated condition. And exfoliation material also is seen in the angled antechamber zonules and cilindric process. Typically, it causes pigment loss from the pupillary rough and iris sphincter. Because of that, there will be sphincter transillumination defects. And this release of the pigment causes accumulation of the uh, pigments in the trabecular meshwork. Typically, we see a, a following the dilatation when you examine the patient, there will be a lot of pigment release with the raised intraocular pressure. So, what happens with the time because of the exfoliation material? The loss of the zonular integrity happens. That is, because of that, it results in narrow angles, subluxation, and dislocation of the lens. Because of this, increased complications during the cataract surgery. Following the cataract surgery, continued deposits may cause decentration of the eye wall and capsular back, and also capsular uh, back contraction and posterior capsular pacification. So, ocular association, there will be significant cataract. This is mainly because of the reduced ascorbic acid, and it results in significant ocular ischemia because of the exfoliation deposits in the eye. Because of that, there will be iris ischemia with the microneovascularization. It's not uncommon to have hyphemas, especially following any intraocular surgery. Because of these deposits, there will be chronic breakdown of the blood diaphragm barrier, and this causes significant inflammation whenever we operate on the such eyes. Abnormal homocysteine that is typically associated with exfoliation causes, leads to central lateral vein occlusion in these people. And uh, what, how does the glaucoma happen? It is mainly because of the increased Rothko resistance in the trabecular meshwork. It can be mechanical if there is a narrow angle, and usually it is because of the degenerative changes that happens in the trabecular meshwork or occlusion of the trabecular meshwork with the pigment dispersion. And also increased aqueous protein concentration because of the breakdown of the blood aqueous barrier also contributes to raise in the intraocular pressure. So challenges in management of exfoliation is twofold. One is to take care of the glaucoma that is associated with it. And the second is to take care of the cataract, the two with a uh, instable zonular uh, support. These two challenges one may have to take care while dealing with these patients. So eyes with uh, exfoliation, like in open angle glaucoma, we always start with the medical therapy. But majority of the times, the response to the medication will be poor, especially in advanced cases. One may have to consider laser treatment or the surgery. Laser procedures typically is the trabeculoplasty for the open angle glaucomas. If there is an associated angle closure because of the uh, shift of the lens iris diaphragm, one may have to consider laser iridotomy. Procedure of ELT and SLT is same as in the PYG. The similarly, ACPA will be like any other angle closure glaucoma ACPA. What is important to remember is IOP specs can be significant, and one may have to treat this IOP specs with alpha 
Remember, in general, the inflammatory response is more. So people have to treat the size more with the topical steroids following the procedure. Coming to the uh, surgery, there are various procedures have been tried. Trabeclectomy, people have tried angle-based procedure just to address the deposits of the exfoliation in the angle. And there is very limited data available on the tubes. And, uh, and of course, the cataract, especially if there is a significant cataract and glaucoma associated. Trabeclectomy is still the most commonly done surgery and it is like any other standard procedure. And when there is a significant cataract associated with it, we tend to do the combined procedure. As I mentioned, these eyes are prone for significant inflammation. Need for the enhanced topical steroids is very important. Angle-based surgery basically addresses the mechanism for the raised LIBOP and it restores the normal function of the channels and conjunctiva is present for any future surgeries. What are the angle-based surgeries? If you look at the literature, the trabecular aspiration has been tried. Abinternotrabeculotomy that using the trabectum has been tried. Very little data on viscocanlastomy and suture trabeculotomy is available. Generally not very popular, small group of people tend to use these techniques in managing exfoliation glaucomas. Very limited information available on the tubes. And uh, cataract surgery can be done either alone if the glaucoma, if it is only syndrome or glaucoma is very mild. We tend to combine both when there is a significant glaucoma associated. What are the challenges we face? These eyes are likely to have corneal endotheliopathy. They're likely to have poor metrosis. As I mentioned, zonular instability with the lens subluxation has to be addressed. And there is an increased risk for the vitreous loss, increased IOP and inflammation in the post-operative period that has to be taken care of with the extensive use of uh, topical steroids. One should keep it in mind, late IOL decentration and dislocation that can happen in a severe exfoliation eyes. Preoperative evaluation is very important. Slit lamp microscopy and look for it unilateral versus bilateral. Assess carnal endothelial status. Always assess pupillary dilatation. Following the dilatation, examine what is the extent of the exfoliation material deposited and the density and stability of the cataract has to be addressed. Important to remember, any shallow or irregular antechamber suggests lens displacement. Preoperatively, we need very good echinacea. Be prepared, anticipate possible problems, and keep the special equipment, like iris hooks to take care of the small people, CTR to take care of the unstable bags. And there is a major problem, a vitro surgeon backup to take care of the problem in the same city. And we have a, how do we manage the small people? A good viscoelastic. We may need a mechanical devices such as the iris hooks, billet people dilated, or one can use Kuglin hooks for full and good technique. A compromised zonules, assess the extent of the zonular dialysis on the table and the severity of the generalized zonular instability, maybe entire bag may be affected. Depending upon the extent of the bag uh, compromise, we can use the uh, capsular tension rings. Capsular tension ring has a dual purpose, intraoperative support and long-term IOL stabilization. Usually, the emitter is larger than the capsular bag and it expands capsular equator, buttress the weak zonules and equal distribution of the support on the bag and it, it kind of recenters the bag. And it can also reduce the PCO and capsular phimosis with the time. Place the eye oil in bag. And which type of eye oil, whether single piece or, or three piece? Yes, single piece is advisable if the bag is stable. If the bag is not stable, it is better to place a three piece lens. The reason is the three piece lens acts like a CTR. One to two clock hour zonular descents can be taken care of with this. In case of late, late displacement of the eye oil with the bag, Fixing the eye oil will be easy. For example, if you see the three piece lens in the bag that got displaced, you can see the exfoliation material here in the pupillary area with the presence of the trabeculectomy blood here. 
And after fixing the bag with the one uh, mechanical suture, you can see a, a stable uh, bag and which is persisting for a period of time. So post-operative cause, as I indicated, increased inflammation, uh, that's mainly because of the iris vascular leaks, a compromised blood access barrier. This may cause IOP spikes that has to be addressed, and one may have to be careful and assess them and take care of them. As I mentioned, needs aggressive topical steroids and AGMs. Capsular phimosis, uh, remember to make a good size rexis so that phimosis can be minimized. CTR helps in minimizing phimosis. In spite of this, if it happens, a radial relaxing test with the young laser is recommended. So in management of exfoliation, it is important to remember extent of discussion to do with the patient preoperatively. Appropriate meticulous clinical evaluation will help in minimizing the complications during the surgery. A careful planning of the surgery helps in coming out with a successful surgery. These are the, some of the thoughts on exfoliation syndrome, how to manage clinically. And thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you.